Picture me this, you're writing your flood risk assessment report, you reach your surface water flooding section. Next thing you know, you're on the government website, screenshotting the hell off out of the maps and just copy pasting them back to your report and saying, surface water flooding currently is medium, the levels will change, therefore the flooding will be mitigated with a new drainage. And thumbs up and we pray for the best. Well, it doesn't have to be the case because the actual government, DEFRA specifically, they have a website where we can download this information and interpolate them. It's just a matter of knowing how. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to download the information, import them into Civil 3D, interrogate the depth and style it accordingly, and then add the legend on it so they can know what they're reading. Without further ado, let's begin. In order to create my drawing, what I want to do is get my eastings and northings, get the latitude and longitude, put them in my geolocation so I can get the satellite imagery so I can overlay on top of it the surface uh, flood depth map. So the first step is to get this information. What I'm going to do first, uh, my site will be Calthorpe Park in Birmingham. So I'm going to copy the postcode, it's B129LJ. I'm going to go to the grid reference finder and paste it in here. I'm just going to keep the postcode because that feels required only postcode. So I'll hit go and what I'm going to do is slightly zoom out because I actually want somewhere in the center of the field. The reason I'm doing this is because I've noticed that sometimes when you don't pick the center, the eastings and northings will not fully align. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this to the side, go to my civil 3D and I'm just going to type point and then type the eastings and northings of the point I've selected in the grid reference finder. Now I will leave the link in the description below for this website. It helped me a lot in many things. Now if we zoom extend, uh, we will need to find our point. But if we cannot see it, that's probably because the point is a dot. So to change that, just go P type and hit enter. We're going to select the cross mark and we're going to change from set size relative to screen to absolute units and hit OK. Then zoom extend and there's our point and if we if you have the coordinates enabled you can see at the bottom of the screen we're roughly in the same coordinates next what i want to do is copy my latitude and longitude coordinates and then let's maximize civil 3d and we're gonna go to insert set location from map what we want to do is we want to copy the latitude and longitude in the address above and then hit the search bar then drop mark here. You don't have to touch anything in the map because that's where we've done the latitude and longitude. Then we hit next and now we're gonna select our GIS coordinate system. Now for England is OSGB 1936 and the EPSG code is 27700. Make sure your drawing units is in meters and we hit next. Now make sure you, in your snapping mode you have the node enabled because we're gonna snap on the point. Now once we left click on the point it will ask us to specify the north but since it's set correctly we're just gonna hit enter now it will take a few seconds and you can see this is our site now what i would like to do sometimes is draw a rectangular around the side so i can basically know hey this is the side i'm looking at and i don't care about anything else and i have a very weird way to do it so i go circle and then i select the center of the node and then i just draw the radius just to see how much i need so let's say 500 would do then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type polygon and then number of sides four. select the center of the circle, circumscribed about circle, and then select the outside of the circle. Then we're going to go to the geolocation tab and then we're going to select capture area and we're going to click on top left to bottom right. What we did there is basically screenshotted the map and now we don't need the rest of the map so we can go map aerial map off we're gonna select our polyline we're gonna send it to back so we can be able to select our map and work with it we're gonna change the optimal to very fine because we want very fine high hd maps and then in the properties i'm gonna change the transparency to 50. actually i'm gonna make it 25 and then i'm just gonna fade it transparency and fade is two different things so i had to learn this the hard way after printing an a1 drawing and realize that oh it's not working as i expected now we have our map and everything set up let's set up our viewport so we're gonna create a viewport in the model space paper space we're gonna create a viewport in the paper space and we're gonna from here all the way to here and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna left click and 
scale it to 500 I think that should be fine nah, actually let's do it 1000 maybe 1000 seems about right and let's leave it at there and let's hit save and let's save it in our tutorial folder so we're gonna create a new folder ty0.26 and then we're gonna name it surface water float depth and we're just gonna name it uh, existing actually let's give it the job number because that's how you do it in actual real life you give it the job number and then existing surface water flood depth one in a thousand because we're gonna look at the one in a thousand now let's go back to our browser and we're gonna go to the defra website uh, defra data download i'll leave a link in the description below so basically this website is for the risk of flooding from surface water and what we're gonna do is just type our postcode hit search and for some reason it doesn't work but what i'm gonna do is just find the map myself so it's in birmingham and roughly i think it's in sp08 so I'm pretty sure is somewhere here so I'm just gonna select this one and then what I'm gonna do is get available tiles now oh, we selected the area actually we're close we select a bigger area but that's fine that doesn't matter because when you download the information you download them per tile see s098 sp08 so in the available tiles underneath it there should be a hyperlink and you're just gonna select it and we're gonna save it in our tutorial folder so we're gonna go to our tutorials and save it here and just hit save once it's been saved, we're gonna go to our folder and what we're gonna do is we wanna extract it. The reason we're extracting it is because when we're gonna import it into Civil 3D, it cannot read zip files. And because there is more than the flood depth of the one in a thousand in this zip file, so we wanna need to be able to select it because if it's a zip file, usually you cannot select what's inside the zip file from a third party software. Little tip there for you. So now we don't need the browser anymore, so let's minimize. Let's go back to our model space. Now, what we're gonna do is type map ws space and task pane on. Then we're gonna go to the task pane that just appeared, data, connect to data, and then this window will appear and we're gonna go at shp which stands for shapefile and what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this icon here the shapefile icon we're gonna go to our tutorials folder where we saved our download and we extracted it and we're gonna select the depth now what i'm gonna do is just hit f2 and a control c to copy the name select the one in a thousand depth and then what i'm gonna do is paste the name here just so i can be consistent consistency is key and then hit connect once we hit connect it will take us to another window and then don't rush and hit add to map what we want to do is add to map with query so basically what we want to do is we're going to tell it hey put the map within these boundaries and we're going to do that by clicking on locate on map and then inside a polygon now it'll ask us if we're going to create or select we're going to create and then we're going to snap on the vertex you can move the windows away so i would suggest just have them moved away in the first place right click enter and we finished and we're gonna hit ok and it's adding the layers once it's done you can close the data connect window and you can see we have some shapes here now what we need to do is basically define all this information so basically civil city goes okay there is a shape file i'm gonna read it okay this is what i'm reading so it's not smart enough yet to read everything that we need this shape file came with some features and tables and, and information so that's what we're gonna do now it's modify them so they can be styled and be presented in the right way to do that we're gonna select the map that just appeared on our task pane right click edit style now in the bottom end we're gonna click on new theme and what we're gonna do is in the property we're gonna change the feature id to depth now you can see the minimum and maximum value were automatically picked anything more than 1.2 is not the minimum value but don't worry about it don't change them i actually didn't attempt to change it so i have found a different work around it but if you know how to fix this and not mess up the map leave it in the comments below in the style range we're gonna hit the three dots and then we're gonna select the fill pattern so basically this white one is the border 
and this one is basically what's going to be filled in. So we're going to change the first fill color to a very light blue, let's say one for one. And then the second color, we're going to change it into, let's say 160. I'm not making it too deep because I'm saving it the too deep blue for something else. I'll show you in a bit. Then we hit OK. Now in the feature text uh, label, we're going to add a new one. And basically what we want to show is in the map is like, hey, this is the float depth here. This is the float depth there. So we're going to change the text to M text so we can be able to modify it if we need to. And the text in the edit expression, we want to remove what's there. So backspace and then property depth and hit OK. We want to change it to millimeters, the unit, and I'm going to do it 2.5. I think is sufficient and bold. Why not? And hit OK. Then we're going to tick the create feature labels because we want it to create the feature uh, labels and we're going to hit OK. Now you can see the map slightly changed and you can see some text. Now we don't need this green layer anymore, so we're going to select it and then delete. Now you can see that anything more than 1.2 uh, uh, is light blue. We don't want that. We want it to be dark blue. So hit the three dots next to the light blue and select the fill pattern, fill, change it to a darker blue so i would suggest 164 and hit apply and then close and then just for consistency so the key can be consistent we're gonna move it down uh, let's move it down there we go so we've got the 0 to 150 150 300 300 600 690 90 to 1.2 and anything more than 1.2 now that we're done the last step is just to go into our viewport adding our legend and specifying everything so basically when you're looking at this if we look at the viewport you can see that is here is 0.5 to 0.3 here is 0.3 to 0.6 0.6 to 0.9 now if you don't like the colors as they look or you always can just right click edit style and change them manually from here but that i'll leave it up to you now we're gonna go to our paper space and let's add our key to do that once you switch to paper space civil 3d tends to bring out the layout tools and uh, we're gonna hit legend and then legend and we're gonna select the viewport and then will prompt us to put the uh, location of the legend let's select here now it's too small for my liking a quick fix is just to scale it so instead of messing about with rows and stuff, I'm just scaling it using the scale command. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it smaller and we've got it. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is just make sure I'm aligned correctly. So I'm just going to have it aligned properly. I might be remove some rows I don't need. So let's say we I don't need this row, delete row. I'm just going to change it, let's say, to legend. And then I'm just going to delete the uh, last row because I don't need it. And I think we're done. So maybe we can make it slightly smaller. And there we go. We've got our legend. And then the project title, it's going to be what's going to be in your job. And then drawing title, existing, uh, defra, surface, water, depth, four, one in a thousand not enough space so i'm just gonna put the surface water there there we go yeah, not enough space either so and because i have a weird style in the discipline i'm gonna make sure it's trainer so it can become blue and this is how you can import the shape file into civil 3d modified to suit the depth ranges and then add the legend to it so now that we have the map ready i think the most likely follow-up question would be from this teacher or would be hey how can i get the flop depth on one specific uh, point well, the short answer is that you can't, because if we go back to model space and go to our task pane and right click and hit show data table and give it a few seconds to load, you can see there is a column called depth and actually the depth is simply a text. So basically the way they gathered and uh, collected uh, the data is through this. So basically they said, okay, in this tile, let's say one square meter, the depth could be anything from 0 0.15 to 0 0.3. This is simply just because amount of data that actually for each point would have been too much. So that is how it's presented. And that's how they decided to do it. So I hope you find this tutorial useful. So we learned how to import our uh, DEFRA surface water flood 
uh, data into Civil 3D, present them, uh, play with the styles, and then add our key so we can create a nice PDF so we it can uh, follow up with the FRA, for example. Now, for those who you don't have Civil 3D, what I will show you in the next tutorial is how to import the surface flood data from DEFRA in QGIS and then you can screenshot or PDF from there and use it however you wish. It's the same functionality so basically we import it, we interpolate it, we add a key and that's it. So subscribe so you get notified when I upload it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.